Hey everyone, welcome to the Hopcast. Ah, uh, thanks for coming back, everybody. I'm Brad Tuliski. As always, my name is Ken Honemeter. And we're back at it with another two beers. Yeah, we've got uh, some beers that we've never had before from a brewery we've never had before. Uh, but this is Pisca Brewing out of North Carolina. Right, and we have the Vortex 1 and the Vortex 2. Yes. So I've got I've got both of these in the trade. Darkness, Dark Lord, trade. So they must be good. Yeah. Unless you got ripped off. Uh, yeah. But we'll find out. <laughs> Okay, um, so I think we have to start with the one since we'll start with it, the one. of course, came before the two. Yes, and uh, it's also a triple IPA, I guess. And so I just got this probably a couple weeks ago, so I don't know if it was bottled a couple years ago or if it's freshly bottled because it does say 3 slash 09. Yeah, well... Um, yeah, hopefully it's not too old if it's, I mean, you said this thing comes in at like 133 IBUs. Right, and it's over 10%. Yeah, so Eight I want some of those hops, baby. Mm. Yeah. So let's give All it right. a pour and pour it out. out. All right, so we got, we got a lot of head in that glass from... I guess it's all the hops, right? Oh, it's got to be all the hops, and uh, probably some of the uh, the yeast in there too. But um, the lace seems pretty strong, but not clinging to the glass as heavy as I might have expected. Mine is maybe our maybe your glass is dirty or something. Oh. But mine mine's clinging pretty damn good. <laughs> I gave you that that glass that I pooped in. <laughs> 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 so this is why we had them in my place. I wasn't going to poop <laughs> Oh, smells delicious. L lots of hops, um, but also a, like kind of a, a sweet, malty backbone. Yeah, it's not a, it's not a huge hop kick, it's, but it's just balanced. It feels light, but a lot of hops. It's, it's aggressive, but balanced, I think. All right, so let's give it a try. Ooh. Oh yeah, lots of carbonation, this lots a, of lots of bitter hops. This is a lot going on in here. Mm -hmm. A lot of hops. Um, I don't think they're lying about that 133. No, there's a, like a ton of hops in here. I think I think there's, as far as the hops go, uh, they're out of balance. There, there's a lot of aroma hops, a lot of bitter hops, but not too many flavor hops in there. Yeah. It, it's sort of bitter for bitter sake. Yeah, it's very, very bitter. Oh, I think Don got the end of the glass, and he has lots of, yeah, like, a lot of sediment. lots of sediment. Oh yeah. yeah. So you can see this is like totally murky, whereas ours this is, is uh, almost a ruby red. So, don't drink the dregs. <laughs> <laughs> so it's got to be fresh, it, if it's. I'm thinking it's it's pretty fresh because these the hops are, are extremely aggressive and um, I, I don't think any if this has been mellowed out I would be very very surprised. <laughs> <laughs> right, I could not imagine this any fresher. But I'm liking it. <laughs> I think I like. Is it bad that I like it? <laughs> I like it. I don't love it. I, I could I could use a little bit more balance and a little bit more flavor hop in it. Right, it's not making me like want to keep drinking it it's like uh, i do enjoy that taste but i don't i don't i could never drink a whole bottle no right yeah like um to us hop heads out there I, I think we equate drinking something like this after a hard day's work where you know some people would reach immediately for the whiskey They're like <laughs> give me something that blows my head away with hops <laughs> <laughs> so since this is 133 how do you think it compares with the dogfish head 120 well, I think the dogfish head has a lot of sweetness that counteracts the the bitterness in it. Okay. So, it, like to me, the one twenty doesn't seem like overly bitter and hoppy. Right. It's more it, like because it's so high in alcohol, there has to be a lot more like um, uh, fermentable sugars and unfermentable sugars. Where this so. is over ten too, so. But that's twenty one. Uh, twenty one, yeah. <laughs> I always forget that it's twenty one. <laughs> that's why I was passed out. <laughs> Don't drink it as your session beer, yeah. So I, 
not blown away, but it's it's okay. I think I think it's a good beer. I mean, it's um, it has like that that crazy bitterness, but it also has I think a nice a nice malt back backbone to it as well. Mm-hmm. Um, maybe it's coming through just because there is lack lacking there of the flavor hops, but and we should mention that both of these are organic. Oh yeah. Um, so, as far as organic beers go, this is organic great. beers. This is awesome. <laughs> There's a lot of organic beers that I don't, just don't cut it. I don't know why that is. Uh, there was a lost top cast of us drinking organic beers, and we are just so uninterested that it just never we're, made it. We were hungover and not liking the organic beers, so we just like decided not to air it. Yeah. It's like Top Chef when, like, you know, why did you put that on the plate if you knew it sucked? <laughs> We didn't want to just serve up another episode. We got standards. <laughs> and plenty of drinking. So organic-wise, awesome. Yeah, I mean, I, th- I think it's a good beer. I, I wouldn't go seek it out or anything. We, we looked, they have, uh, what was it, Chinook and Nugget hops? And Nugget. Chinook and Nugget are the hops in this one. So, yeah, I think we uh, should tag the rest of this and... Take a look at their Russian Imperial style. Right, I'm much more excited for this one. Yeah, I am too. All right, so we managed to take down the hops. Yep. Our faces have melted off from hoppy deliciousness, and uh, we're ready to go into some intense Russian Imperial stout. Right, so they brought it with the organic hops. Let's see if they can bring it with the organic Russian. All right. <laughs> <laughs> Vortex number two, ladies and gentlemen. Um, and this is on their website, um, so I think they brew it at least once a year or every once in a while. And it comes in at 11.2%. I'm excited. Russian Imperial style, let's pour it out. So definitely poured out dark Russian Imperial thick. Yeah, it's uh, dark and thick, not quite uh, of the motor oil viscosity that you would get from a Dark no, Lord or anything like that. It's not but... leaving the glass with a film that you can't see through. No, actually, yeah, not too much uh, in the way of lacing at all. kind of dissipates rather quickly. Yeah. But... It actually kind of smells gaseous, like CO2. Like if you're emptying a keg, it smells... Oh, okay, I don't... Um... But it has that roasted... Chocolate yep. y smell. Um, as far as the beer goes. <laughs> yeah. uh, not coffee, though. Not... I, get, I get a mild sense of coffee, but more so chocolatey. Right, let's, let's do it. Oh, nice. This is one of those where you're getting that tart raspberry. Yeah, the raspberry know? again. Yeah, um, I enjoy these. I like that the raspberries at the end of this one, where I think. Dark Lord and Darkness have the raspberry up front. You get it. Uh, see, I got, I, got I got it right away. Uh, I thought it was kind of in the middle towards the end. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm getting like completely the opposite. <laughs> <laughs> I have like, I have the, it finishing up with more of the roast and bitterness, but like up front is with like the raspberry. But everyone tastes differently, so. Yeah. Yeah, I'm finishing with the raspberry, and just sweetness is left there, and, and it feels warm up front to me. It, well, at 11.2, right? Damn well better be warm. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this, um, either way, I think, it, I think it's very well-rounded, and it's, it's quite drinkable. Right, uh, like, this is one of those beers that I haven't heard of, so it's not hyped up to me, where it's like, holy shit, this is awesome. Mm-hmm. This is, if I could get this all the time, I'd be drinking it all the time and so is this is this one of the lim- uh, a limited type of beer that's like i believe they're only brewing it once a year or every season okay it's probably a seasonly release um, yeah but i'm like i'm liking the two the vortex two more than the vortex one I, I agree. I is, like it. I like it better too. Is that bad and, since we're the hop gas? Yeah, we are a, a couple of hop heads, and we're we're going with the Russian Imperial Stouts over the uh, triple pale ale. <laughs> um, but I, I think it has just like a nice tartness with a, kind of a, those fruity notes up front, and and finishes clean with with the roast and, and chocolate. Yeah, this would be a 
Russian Imperials are great cigar beers. I just feel I was like, going to bring uh, one over. I just feel like I need a cigar or a pipe. I got my pipe here. <laughs> <laughs> just something about that like roasted taste just makes you think. Lends, it, lends itself very well to smoke. So, you know, this you need you need a pretty hefty beer like this to stand up to a smoke, the smokiness of a cigar. And uh, Russian Imperials are a great way to go. Yeah, are they saying anything on the bottle, like if they're using a coffee or what kind of coffee they're using? They don't. They don't mention coffee at all. Um, so I couldn't tell you if they actually use coffee or if it's just the roast from the malts. I would kind of tend to think that they are are just using malt. Yeah, I don't. I don't get the coffee bitter. No, I mean there's coffee notes in there, but I don't taste actual coffee. No, and. There's, I think, just the bittering we're getting is from the hops, right? Yeah, there's, there's, um, in in the in the flavor, there's like a quite a bit of flavor hops, uh, which kind of get lost in Russian imperial stouts sometimes. People, I don't know if they, it was it was tough for me to perceive hops in stouts at first, right? But um, well, I have a problem with the sours picking out the stuff in that yeah so. those are so complex and weird that it's just like yeah so i think I you have to keep drinking the more you drink the more you start to be like oh that's, you heard it here that's raspberry keep drinking keep drinking <laughs> <laughs> you keep drinking you, you're gonna pick out new things every time you drink the beer really yeah i think so i mean to truly know a beer very well it takes a long like you know a lot of drinking that one not just not just one glass Certainly not a couple sips from a beer fest or anything like that. So, I'm I'm really liking this. And for an organic beer, fantastic. This, this is the best organic beer. I'm saying it, best organic. That was kind of like heilish. <laughs> <laughs> I take that back. <laughs> best. <laughs> you need to go up. <laughs> oh, so yeah, Pisco brought it. I'm, I'm, we're digging these. Right, we're gonna have to check out some of their, like everyday beers they do, mm -hmm. just to see what they're bringing. Yeah, so we'll venture on down to North Carolina at some point, stop off and get some cigarettes. I'm going. I'm going really down there, there for South Carolina. I'm going to Sexual Chocolate Release. Oh, so. you dirty whore, uh, you! I'll see what else we maybe I can find okay. down there. <laughs> Shut up, man! <laughs> <laughs> All right, sounds good. Well, um, yeah, Tasty Bears, check them out if you see them because uh, it seems like they've got some good things going on here. So, right, Thanks for watching. Thank you.